Welcome guys and No uh stop so hell Hey guys and welcome to this brand new video of mine. Today we'll be talking about a company which is rather confusing but boy I wish all of you have invested in that company at the IPO. Oh boy I do wish that. So we're talking about bio Techni company. Biotechni company, not biotech, it's biotechni, techni, I'm not sure what I do pronounce it, is a company that sells life science and research products and a few more fancy things and they have the slogan where science intersects innovation. And if we go through the website key product highlights we can see accelerate your cell and gene therapy workflows then we can see automated instruments these are instruments to sell then workflow solutions so cell and gene therapy target protein degradation uh, boy, I have no fucking clue what all of that is. But what I can say is they have a ridiculous big amount of brands. This is another thing. So if you Google them and you find them at Wikipedia, basically they, they haven't been a year since 2013 where they haven't bought at least one or two companies. So they are super good or it appears like as if they're really really good in buying other companies we'll just go through more so for example if we go here to a research product you can see all kinds of stuff so for example you can buy so for example as they say here you can buy and seems biotech offers a large catalog of high highly pure and active R&D systems and scenes for catalyzing a variety of different biological reactions. Yeah, I hope you all understand what I'm talking about. It's obvious, isn't it? Now, I just want to make sure, in this case, with biotechni, I don't understand exactly what they're doing and how all of their stuff works. And I would be lying to you if I say I made that investment purely on the fact that I know everything about how their system works and so on because that would be a total lie. Yeah, to sum it all up, I would be lying to you if I know exactly what they're doing and how all of their products work and everything. But let's just have a quick look at the chart and why I told you earlier that I wished all of you to be in with. This is a long-term graph of Techni Bio Company, Devon Ticket Tech, which I think is super cool. And as we can see back here in 989, February they were trading at around 36 cents now they're trading at 488 in other words if we go an in info line and then we start here and we go up all the way with a total return 
of 140,886 percent. By the way, that's the way how fortunes are built. Exactly with that growth. This is ridiculously. But here we have the problem of the hindsight bias. It looks obvious in retro respect, but in 89, no one, not even the founder or anyone, could have predicted that, that biotechnology company will perform that well. But another criteria, as you know from myself, all time high. More or less having a constant all time high. And if we have a look at the daily chart, we can see that they had an all time high just a few days ago, but they sold off quite a bit in recent days. Uh, I don't know why, to be honest, but even in COVID, that they crashed and then they went straight up again. But that's been it so far. Talking about the stock, let's just have a quick watch at Market Watch. So we're talking about company with a market cap of roughly 20 billion. We have 39 million shares outstanding. We have a dividend yield of 0.26% or basically nothing. We have a ridiculously high price earnings ratio with 140 and a dividend of combined $1.28 because this is all just the quarterly dividend. And if we go to financials, we can see first of all, we have a nice growth in revenue. I love that. We have a nice growth in the money spent on research and development. Because as I always say, research and development is the foundation of further cash flow. And if we have a look at the cash flow, here we can see they paid out a rather nice or little their the dividend increased just by a few cents. What we can say what we can see from the total amount of mm, dividends paid we can see they bought back some stocks but in rather small numbers so we have a total combined return of money f to shareholders of 100 million and we have a free cash flow above that this is what's really important to me and here from last year to this year we have a real real good increasement in the free cash flow let's see whether this is stable or not but from here I would say let's just strum straight into the investor presentation Biotechni, where science intersects innovation, corporate presentation, June 2021. So we have a business overview. So president and CEO is the Chuck Namath. The headquarters is Minneapolis. I do not know what MN is. Minnesota, something like that. I don't know. Number of employees is 2,600. And they are represented at 35 locations worldwide. They're called tech on the Nasdaq. They had a market cap of 16 billion since then they have increased and we have a revenue for the fiscal year 2020 of 739 million and what we can see here is how their revenue comes together so we can see that the large portion of that is consumables then we have instruments service and Royalties. Here we can see a few of their products. Oh, sorry, that's not being the revenue up here. Here we have the revenue by customer and type. So we can see the pharma biotech company. Oh, well, it's been the revenue for the areas, and here we can see the exact customers and types so we can see that pharma and biotech is the biggest part 
then academia OEM do not really know what that is then distributors and then we have the geographic T which is America is still the biggest with 57% then we have uh, Middle East and Europe and Africa uh, with 25% and then we have Asia with just 18% Four key strategy for sustained growth, Gra ge geographic expansion, core product innovation, gap filling with merging acquisitions and market expansion and they want a culture creation and talent. So they also actually cared a little bit about their ESG as I've said in my video about S&P Global, ESG is going to become way more important in the years ahead than it is today. So they better keep an eye on that. So what we can see here is they have a large addressable end market between 14 and 20 billion. So for example, protein research, reagents, market size 3 billion market growth mid single digit biotech growth rate 9 to 11 percent and the biotechnology market penetration is roughly 10 percent and we can see here we have a lot of different markets and most of them are in the mid single digits here we have low double digit diagnostic kits and all in all a large market for biotechni company to grow in that market so they it appears like as if they restructured their segment so protein science is what I said earlier with their different brands and then diagnostic and genomics with those brands so protein science proteins antibodies immunoassays whatever that might be and instruments yes whatever <laughs> So, for example, that protein sold with optional bioactive assay, what, yes. If someone is able to explain to me what that is, please go ahead. But we can see again here, total addressable market 3 billion, market growth mid single digit, and their market share is 10%. Here are their key protein research applications. Again, I don't get them cell gene therapy applications so this for example is something that I actually start caring about and I think that goes through the whole video biotechni company is working in an area where you have super high margins where you will have more and more growth in the years to come where you have a few companies that are able to operate in that area one of them is biotechnology because they have a big moat because it's super complicated to work in these specific areas you need a lot of know-how you need a lot of technique and um, so you can't just build up a company like that from scratch then we have protein pro ah, fuck it pro Tominic analytic tools, yeah, so tools. And what we can see here, what I love is that the biotechnic growth in this area is 15%. Diagnostic and genomics, again, all these different brands. We have a total addressable market of 1 to 2 billion. But what we can see here is that biotechnology's market share is 5%, but we have a growth rate between 20 and 30%. Holy moly, macaroni. 
yes super easy to understand slide and then we have the diagnostic kits total addressable market 1 billion low double digit growth biotech market share smaller than 5% but their growth way bigger than 20% amazing and then we have diagnostic and reagents and here we have a rather small growth rate and it's all right because I'm not sure but I think with uh, these reagents it is a pretty solid market but I'm not totally sure on that yes this is obvious the cross body cell gene and therapy workflow solutions but here we come to something that I like financial results under current leadership so we can see the organic revenue growth is rather good the adjusted operating income is lovely just look at that growth from 190 uh, 169 million to 263 and the cash from operations is also almost doubling within the last eight years all things that I love and we see here the revenue is assumed to be 1.5 billion 2025 and the operating income is assumed to be 0.6 billion and I would love to see that I would really love to see that thank you yeah thank you well so guys to sum it up Biotechni is a company I bought because it popped up here at Finvis as my screen process and because I saw the chart Biotechni is a company where I will never put in 10 or 20 percent of my uh, total net worth just to make just just for you to understand I have no problem with having 20% um, or more in the company as my total net worth currently 60% of my portfolio are in just four companies but I will buy Biotechni stock I'm currently a stockholder or shareholder however you want to call it of Biotechni because I see the long-term graph I see that if I go through that chart here over time they are more or less making one new all-time high after the other sure they have times where they're trading just sideways but which chart does not have that which company and sure they have times where they pretty much have a rather deep downturn but in 28 what a surprise and 29 but overall they grow and overall they have a solid business model and it's the same with a company like Charles River Laboratories or with West Pharmaceutical these are small med tech companies sitting somewhere in the middle of the US they're rarely known by anyone they're super profitable they're operating in a growth market and I bet we will hear more from them in 10 years from now and Biotechni, like West Pharma, like Charles River, in my opinions, are really long-term stocks to hold. Especially due to the fact that I'm not understanding how they work and everything. So I've got to put my trust in the CEO that did perform in the last time. And I can only hope that they will continue to perform and that the market did price the stock fine because I always assume that the market prices stocks and the value of the stocks way better than any analyst can cover so if the stock is trading at a new all-time high there's a reason for it because a lot of people see a certain value there and I hope we all get fooled by randomness by choosing that stock and We'll see biotechny in a few years as a thriving business where we all have small part in it. So guys, that's been it so far. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
I hope you did get what I wanted to bring across. Please consider like. Uh, please consider a like or maybe even subscribing. You can also dislike me. I'm not really giving a fuck about that. But just interact because that's what the YouTube algorithm loves. And thanks for that. See you soon, guys. Bye.